Hello, and welcome to Project Impact. I'm Jamie Quick. You know, emergencies and disasters can happen anywhere, anytime here in Washington State. For example, we've had several small to medium-sized earthquakes over the past 150 years, causing a variety of damage. I think most of us remember the Nisqually quake of 2001. It was our most recent reminder that we are not immune from earthquakes. But really, the Nisqually quake was just a little glimmer of what could really happen if we have an earthquake centered closer to Seattle along the Seattle Fault, or if we have a large subduction zone earthquake off our coastline. Now the steps you take now can help your home be better prepared the next time we start shaking. So let's talk about preparing or retrofitting your home. We're going to walk through this house and take a look at real practical measures you can take right away to make things safer for you and your family. So how do we get started? With me today is Roger Ferris, an expert in earthquake retrofitting of homes. Roger, thanks for joining. Thank you for having me here, Jamie. Great. Well, tell me a little bit about what we're going to be doing at this house today. The idea is to walk through this beautiful old home and look for some improvements that we can make, both structural and non-structural, for earthquake safety. Well, this house is typical of uh, many older homes that are not well connected to the foundation. So a basic retrofit provides that connection. The wood framing gets tied to the concrete foundation. The uh, weak wood frame walls between foundation and first floor are reinforced with plywood panels. And finally, framing connectors connect the floor system to the top of the wall. It's very, very important when you're working with power tools to be sure you have good eye protection, lung protection, because there are some dust issues, and, and basic safety with power tools. So it's, it's important to learn all about how to use them correctly. These are expansion bolts that uh, can be driven into the hole once it's drilled out and cleaned and then tightened and the job is done. Plywood panels go up. Uh, these are structural panels to prevent collapse of this short wood frame wall, sometimes called a pony wall. And uh, the nailing pattern is critical. It's the right type of nails, the right nailing pattern. But the plans are definitely inspected by the local building department and then you usually have two inspections during the process of doing a retrofit. One for the hardware and a final inspection for all the plywood uh, shear wall panels. Hey Tim, how's it going? Good. Hi Jamie. Thanks for coming down. Bet. So as a building inspector for the city of Seattle, what's your role in this whole process? Well, today I'm out here to look at a project impact permit and basically the scope of that is to anchor the mud sills down to the existing foundations, put plywood on the existing pony walls, and connect the pony walls to the existing frame. So you're checking to make sure that work is done properly? That's correct. So are there some financial benefits to this program as well? Um, yes, the homeowner is offered a reduced fee and permits, and it's an expedited permit, so they get in their hands quicker. The homeowner can do it themselves. They don't need to hire an engineer or an architect. Um, but if they want somebody to come in and do it for them, they can hire a contractor to do it. Okay. Well, thanks for talking with us today. And as you can see, getting a permit and starting this process is really not that difficult. Now, if your home was built after 1970, chances are you don't need to make structural changes. But there's still a lot you can do to protect yourself and your family in the event of an earthquake. It's really the overhead heavy objects that hurt people during an earthquake. And that's what we're trying to prevent. So it's very, very important that the tall bookcases, that the television on a shelf, the heavy mirror on the wall, all be secured so that they don't fall and hurt someone during a major earthquake. Remember, the first step is to evaluate your home. Take a good look at what could become hazardous during an earthquake. If your home was built before the 1970s, you may need structural modifications. But no matter when your home was built, or if you rent, there are some simple things you can do to make your home safer during an earthquake. Secure bookcases, cabinets, pictures, and large appliances, including your water heater. For more information on home retrofitting, to find a retrofit contractor, or to register for a free home retrofit class, call 1-877-BOLTED. Well, that wraps up our show on home retrofitting. I hope you have learned as much as I have about getting your home prepared for our next earthquake. I think it's safe to say it's not a matter of if, but when the ground will start shaking again. Make sure you are as ready as you can be. Today's show has been another great example of how spending time and money on disaster preparedness and prevention is a good investment for you, your family, business, and school. It's not hard. To become better prepared for disasters, visit www.3days3ways.org to find more information on making a plan, building a kit, 
and getting involved in your community. This has been a Project Impact production, building disaster-resistant communities right here in Washington State.